What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and in today's design theory video we're going to be talking about the next element of design, color. You'll see here on this first page of the presentation that I've put together um, that we have our primary colors on top. Now all colors are made up of these three colors, red, yellow, and blue. Now your secondary colors are all combinations of these primary colors. As you'll see in the description, red and yellow combine to create orange, yellow and blue are combined to create green, and red and blue combine to create purple. In addition to your primary and secondary colors, you also have what are referred to as tertiary colors. Now these are kind of the in-between colors um, between your primary and secondary colors. So when I show you guys the color wheel, you'll kind of see all of the, the range of colors that we have. But your tertiary colors are basically, you know, what you'll see a midway point between red and orange, between yellow and orange, between yellow green, blue green, blue violet, and red violet. Now, as far as color schemes go, we have uh, a few different kinds of color schemes including uh, this one, which is referred to as analogous colors. And what that means is they're basically the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So it would be something kind of in the range of red, orange, yellow, or maybe, you know, yellow and green, and something that's kind of a, a neighboring color. You can think of it that way. All right, moving along, we have our complementary colors. And you'll see here on the color wheel, the complementary colors are basically just the colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So red and green, blue and orange, and purple and yellow are, are kind of the, the basic uh, complementary colors that I'm talking about. And you'll see those in both of these examples here. Uh, complementary colors are, are usually very impactful. Um, they, they tend to resonate with people and uh, they can be used in any type of design or drawing or painting. Now next we have uh, monochromatic colors. Now this should be pretty easy to understand because it's really just one color, um, but you can use different tints and shades and values of that color or hue. So in these two examples, um, both still lifes, you will see that we're basically just in that uh, pink and magenta family, mostly pink though. All right, from here we have what are called triadic colors. Now triadic colors are interesting, you know, they're very um, bright and they kind of, you know, they have a different effect than complementary colors because instead of just using two colors like complementary colors or one color like monochromatic colors, these are a combination of three colors, hence the name tri and triadic. So what these are are basically three colors that are equally spaced out in the color spectrum. So if you look at the color wheel, you'll see I have you know red, yellow, and blue highlighted. But you could also probably use you know combinations of green and orange and purple. I think that that would be another good example. Or um, you know maybe yellow with red and and purple or like a, a bluish green. You can kind of play around with it, but you'll see it. It, it kind of reminds me of a uh, kind of a pop art style, which is pretty cool. Now we have what are called tetradic colors. And these are basically two pairs of complementary colors being used at the same time. So it's four colors in total, two pairs of complementary colors. So this example just really demonstrates that beautifully. You have the red and the green, as well as the yellow or yellowish orange and blue. So these are the basic color schemes that can be made up of uh, the different colors in the color wheel. So again, tetradic colors, triadic colors, monochromatic colors, complementary colors, and analogous colors. And these are all the different combinations of colors that you can create using just red, yellow, and blue. Now, I have another uh, example that I wanted to share with you guys um, that basically will take a closer look at some of these colors and how they can be used in design. So you'll see here, I made this, um, this graphic that talks about the use of color in marketing and branding. Now one thing to remember here is that you know color 
it's more about just what than what you see. It's also about you know what it makes you feel, and it's really important to remember that with any brand or any company, um, the colors that they use are obviously intentional, and they want to evoke certain feelings or express certain things um, that the logo isn't literally saying or expressing itself. So in the first category here, you'll see that we have some multicolored logos, and these are generally playful, fun free and all-encompassing. So you have things like Google and eBay and PlayStation and those all combine you know different colors together to create this really fun kind of feeling. And that's you know it, it kind of tells you what the brand is about without there being any tagline or any secondary information there. In the next category we have black or monochromatic logos which tend to be bold, sophisticated, and distinct. And all of these logos are that and more. Um, you know, of course, Apple, Disney, Nike, and Sony are just a few of these examples here, um, but they are just very powerful and striking, and it's just a simple black logo on white that really stands out. Now, as we continue to come down here, you'll see that we have now brown logos, and a lot of these, yeah, you know, can be used for, you know, like candy companies, so like M&Ms and Hershey, and Dove, but also uh, coffee companies as well as UPS. And these tend to kind of have more of a rustic, nostalgic feel to them, um, while also kind of just evoking that uh, feeling or sensation of, of just a natural kind of rich feeling. Um, so I think all of these are, are good examples of that intentional use of color and how it resonates with the viewer or the consumer. Now. Uh, moving along, we're going to start to get into the, the actual, you know, other colors that we were talking about previously. Um, these red logos here obviously evoke feelings of energy and danger and strength and love. Um, and they're all, you know, also very striking. And I'm sure at least some of these are familiar to you guys, if not all of them. But then as we go through the color spectrum, we'll move on to the orange colors. And looking at these, Nickelodeon, SoundCloud, Home Depot, and Firefox, these all kind of have a fun and playful, creative and warm kind of feeling to them. All right, now you'll see the yellow logos. And of course, you know, I'm sure just about everybody has seen, you know, McDonald's and Reese's and Cheerios. And these are all, you know, brands that have been around for a pretty long time. And again, you know, some of them reinvent themselves, but that intentional use of color is really being used uh, very purposefully and effectively here. Now we come down a little bit more and you'll see we start to get away from the warmer colors and into some slightly cooler colors like the green logos we have here. You'll see Whole Foods, Tropicana, Starbucks, Spotify, uh, Animal Planet. All of these really make you think about nature, right? You, you think organic and fresh and healthy. And that's what they want you to think about when you see their logo, when you think about their brand. They want you to to feel something. You know, it's it's more than just looking at it and identifying it visually. It's actually communicating something. So now, when we come down here, you'll see that we have blue logos, which tend to be, uh, you know, evoke feelings of loyalty and trust and and confidence. So obviously logos like you know Ford and Honda, a lot of car companies use it, but also companies like Gap and Facebook and Fox. You know these are all very iconic logos, um, some that have been around longer than others, but again they all evoke certain feelings. All right, and then we come down to purple logos, and you'll see again logos like uh, Yahoo and candy companies like Cadbury and Wonka as well as uh, the, the Women's Gym Curves and FedEx. Now these logos, you know, you will see purple sometimes used in, in candy packaging and things like that, but it also evokes feelings of, of kind of being royal or um, regal and sophisticated. Um, and they can also be mysterious. And then we kind of end up uh, with the pink logos, which again, you know, you, you go back to your childhood, you think about, you know, girls and, and something that feels, you know, gentle and delicate and, and you think of, of pink, you know, we always think pink for girls, blue for boys, you know, since we were kids, we were kind of uh, conditioned to think about 
certain things or, or equating certain feelings to certain colors. Um, and that's what that's what's happening here. When you look around at all the different brands and all these different companies, you are actually attaching feelings and thoughts to the colors that they are using in their branding. So I wanted to share this graphic with you guys just so that you could see how it's being used. And it, it is intentional, you know, and, and we might not realize it, but subconsciously um, it's being done for a reason. Now, if I go back to the original presentation that I was showing you guys, um, just real quick, you'll see, you know, these colors in, in nature and photography and everything like that. And a lot of these logos are really just, you know, one color, maybe two colors, but they're all very effective. So this is just something I want you guys to think about as you start to look around and, and you know, think about your designs and all of the things in the world around you. I want you to pay close attention to the colors and how they make you feel. And while color theory is a very deep and expansive area to get into, I wanted to kind of introduce you to the basics of it and try and give you a little bit better understanding of different color combinations and color schemes and things like that. So this is just kind of an overview, a general presentation or introduction into the different kinds of colors and color schemes. But in the next video uh, that I'll be putting out in a couple of days, I'm actually going to show you how you can go about selecting your own color schemes and combinations for your work and how you can change colors very easily on the fly with something like a logo or an illustration. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, please uh, like it, give us a thumbs up, and comment below. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to our email list, and I will send you guys a couple of cheat sheets that I made that have all of the elements and all of the principles of design. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you soon.